Hey, it's some old guy coding again today, and uh, you know, just put it on camera. Let me knock some stuff off my desk. But what the heck is this? Well, actually, this is the control unit for a hospital bed. You know, my mother-in-law, um, uh, in her uh, uh, last couple of years, was having orthostatic uh, pr breathing problems, and because of her CHF. And uh, it was suggested to us that maybe we forgot our uh, bed that could elevate nicely, you know, for her to uh, sit up a little bit more when she sleeps, so it would help with the uh, with the breathing. So we got out uh, off of uh, Craigslist. We found a quite nearby hospital bed. Um, it was quite reasonable. So this is the power unit off of that hospital bed. Um, the rest of the bed is gone. Uh, we couldn't find anybody that was particularly interested, so we uh, went ahead and just recycled the metal portions of it. And I wanted to keep this to see what the heck it is and see how it works. So we got this remote control here, and, um, and that goes through this little guy. You know, a little. And yeah, let's plug that guy in. And apparently, it takes a uh, nine volt backup. I have no idea. And here it is. It's an uh, Okay, I'm at <laughs> two. Apparently, it's designed for non uh, non continuous use because it says interrupt time half a minute to four minutes. So, uh, apparently, you can't run it continuously. That's too bad. Um, and it's made in Hungary. So, I think the two adjusting bars went into these holes here. There's one there, and there's one over here. Although, you might not be able to hear it, but this motor's running over here. And then that's for the, uh, apparently, the uh, raising the legs. So that's slowly progressing out there, exerting lots of force. I don't think I really have a use for this as it is. Um, but I'd like to take it apart and see what's inside. And maybe take the motors, even though they are intermittent, um, see if we can save some of the transmission for another project. I don't know, but let's take a look inside anyway. Come on, Oki Matt. Ooh, it's heavy. Let's do stuff on this side. Ooh, some of the parts got stuck in here. Right, let's take this and maybe set it aside for a moment. Okay, now it should work. Yeah, look at that. I'm surprised that works as well as it does with uh, half the supports off. So there's a motor behind with a worm gear right there engaging this guy. And then there's a uh, there a lead screw that threads into this block here and uh, gets driven back and forth. This area right here, it seems like it's got this uh, plastic block here. Uh, I've got two screws there. We can take those out first and see what's under there. I don't see any wires going to it, but it, it goes deep inside there. There's no connections on the back side. I wonder where it's hiding. Very good, very good. All right, let's tip her up like this. You can see there's nothing in here, but there are some channels underneath, like maybe it's for airflow? I don't know. Let's take a look and find out here. Should be able to just pull that guy off now. Yeah, so you see, What's the whole point of this? It's just, or is it channels for wires to go? I mean, there's only one wire that's back here. And this seems like a, is what, a fuse? Let's take a look. Oh yeah, she, she's a fuse, all right. The desk is not level, so everything rolls back severely. Yeah, so let's put that fuse back in. I don't know what that's all about. Anyway. So there's that. Let's take a look in here. Uh, that looks to, oh, that's a transformer. So wind voltage is coming in here and going into that transformer. And then probably going to the circuit board here to, uh, to be rectified. Let's take a look at that guy. Oh yeah, bridge rectifier, ha ha. 
a little bit of filtering. Doesn't need much. It's all analog. You know, there's no digital here. And uh, this guy just controls, uh, you know, who gets the current. Those are some hefty diodes on there. No limit switch on the other side. And of course, that's what makes it stop. It's rubbing against, uh, let's see if we can pull one of these guys out again. It's rubbing against uh, little divots on the uh, side of the plastic. Let's grab this guy. And then my hands are all goopy again. It's, uh, yeah, these divots here that, uh, let me get on the camera. It's these little divots here that control the end stop. So uh, it's probably all wired that when it's in the middle, both switches are compressed uh, or active. So if the current flows and then uh, when one of the switches stops, uh, you can't get current through that switch anymore and uh, away we go. So yeah, well lubed, very nice. So I might uh, put those slides and uh, lead screws and uh, drive sprockets maybe just in a plastic bag to hang on to. Um, let's go ahead and... Well, I wonder what the voltage is coming out of this guy. I wonder if we could tell here. Okay. Here comes... Ooh, that's some long screws on there, huh? Uh, yeah, that must hold the whole transformer down. Let's make sure we're unplugged first. Yeah, we are. And, uh, yeah. So here's the power cord coming through. There we go. Oh, it's out. Perfect. So I'm just going to grab that whole transformer. And it should pull out of there now. Oh yeah, it just uh, just fits snugly in there. It's not even the screws that are holding it in, I don't think. I think it's just holding the cover on the other side. There we go. Could be wrong. Maybe I lied. So there it is. Interesting. Yeah, so it's just uh, a line voltage coming in on these two. And then it's the... Uh, service voltage coming out on uh, let's get it on camera so it's just the line voltage coming in on these two leads through the through the fuse and then it's the service voltage that's coming out to the board down there as AC I wonder if this cover will come out too yeah, uh, there the covers out too my question is uh, what is the voltage let's get a voltmeter Oh yeah, I gotta put it on AC, stupid. 21 volts coming out of there. It's being full wave rectified and then filtered. So that's gonna be 21 volts times 1.4, about 30 volts. And what was the uh, nine volt connector for back here then? Where'd that go? Ah, yeah. So there's a, there's a nine volt connector coming in here. So I'm wondering if they, the motors Sure, if the motors could run on something as low as 9 volts in limp mode if the power is out. Yes, and that's coming through a couple of diodes, probably to protect it from the current going back down to the 9 volt and making it pop. So, cool. Cool, cool. All right. So let's take a look at those motors. Let me unplug this guy again. It's very, very nicely built. All Everything's, uh, you know... Except for the switches have uh, covers on their little jumpers, well, almost all of them. An odd combination of uh, screws here. You can see that we've got a screw over this side and that side and then one right here. Seems a, a little odd to me. I'm going to just grab those three screws out of there and we'll see what falls off if anything. Does this whole cap assembly pry up here, maybe out of the case? Doesn't seem like it. Mm. No, it ain't moving any place. Let's turn it over and we are unplugged. Let's see if, uh, oh here, there's a separation back here at the back of the motor canisters. So let's take a look at that. This is a very small Phillips. Let's see if we can just start it going with that guy. Mm. There we go. That's off. It looks like it was hot glued in there a little bit. 
And uh, apparently that's the motor, huh? Does it just need a little persuasion? Do we need to get the acoustic calibrator out? Apparently that's what it took. Some kind of press fit in there. Ooh, and it's still press fit in there. There we go, there it's coming. Oof, and of course, don't forget about the wires. Remember the wires. So we'll just unplug those from the board here. All right, and there we are. The motor is free. Unfortunately, oh, it's got magnets. Unfortunately, uh, it appears that. Uh, you know, there's no, there's no mounting flange. You'd have to, you know, clamp it into something to use it. Um, but let's see what we can drive this with. I wonder if I can just drive it with five volts. Would that be possible? Let's put the black on the black, or black on the blue, and the red on the black. And, uh, and that is set to, let's set it to five volts here, and push the button. Oh yeah, look at that. It's going with five volts. And does it have, oh man, yeah, that's got, that's got pretty good torque. I can stop it. If I really push, I would be able to stop it. Of course, this thing's all greased up, which doesn't help. Um, but yeah, that's quite the powerful motor there. Oh, it's, apparently it's from Germany. This says on the back here, um, I think I disconnected something. Yeah, www.okin.de. So it must be from Germany. This is a model 563. I'll have to try looking that up on the uh, on the web. I mean, that is a that is a hefty motor. That's for sure. And then with the gear reduction, uh, the worm gear and the uh, uh, the other cog in there and the lead screw. That's uh, that's a lot of torque. So yeah, I think I might bag those pieces with grease on and take the motors out and and save the uh, remote control here. You know, this would be handy for maybe uh, moving a camera back and forth someplace. You know, on a, on a lead screw. So, all right. Well, I'll uh, pop up whatever information I can find on this motor, and uh, I think I'll take the rest of it apart, the rest of it apart uh, off camera. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting this channel, and uh, see you next time. Bye. But wait, don't go yet. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you can see future episodes from this channel. And if you'd like to help out and support this channel, uh, go to patreon.com slash coding for as little as a dollar a month. We really appreciate it. Thanks. See you soon.